We got a few positions already taken care of because I'm bringing my luggage with me. And it's Louis. Okay. So I want y'all to get ready to go ahead and jump in that portal and do whatever you're going to get. Because the more you jump in, the more room you make. Folks, I got a confession to make. I'm a Lions fan. Don't blame me, blame my parents for allowing it to happen. But I've been a fan for most of my life and they've been losing for all of my life. So it's been rough. But in 2014, they hired Jim Caldwell. And with that hire, it brought some hope because he was the only Lions head coach in my lifetime that had a winning record. However, he couldn't get them over the hump. He was barely above 500 in his four years as head coach. I believe their average was nine and seven. So they were competitive, but they were a middle of the road team. So in 2016, the Lions fired Martin Mayhew, who was the general manager that hired Jim Caldwell, and they brought in Bob Quinn. Now, when Bob Quinn was hired, the writing was on the wall for Coach Caldwell for two reasons. Bob was from New England, and he was there during their heyday with Tom Brady when they were winning all those Super Bowls. And the word was, he's going to do things the, quote, Patriot way. He was going to bring in a winning culture, a championship culture. And Caldwell, in spite of his success, was not a Quinn guy. He wasn't a Patriot. He wasn't the coach that he hired. So everyone knew Quinn wanted to bring in somebody from New England to replace Caldwell. And that's exactly what happened. At the end of Coach Caldwell's final season, even though the Lions had a winning record, he fired him. And he hired Matt Patricia, who was an assistant for the New England Patriots under Bill Belichick. But not only that, you're fired, you're fired. Bob Quinn cleaned house in the Lions front office because the Lions were a losing franchise. They had only been to the playoffs nine times in the past 26 years. God, I winning one playoff game during that time. And they had people that were working for them that were there during the entirety of that 26 year span. So they were basically robbing the company, doing a poor job every day and cashing their checks. And it didn't stop with the coaches and the people in the front office. Quinn also overhauled the Lions roster. He cut players, traded players, let players walk in free agency. Again, because he was creating this new culture, this Patriot culture, this championship culture. So he wanted to mold this team into his own image. And that meant anybody that wasn't one of his guys on the field, in the coaching room, or in the front office had to go. Now, the reason why I tell that story is because I want to create a context to serve as a comparison to what Bob Quinn did in Detroit to what Deion Sanders is currently doing in Colorado. According to a report out of The uh, Athletic, Deion Sanders has pulled the scholarships of 13 incoming freshmen who were recruited by the previous coaching staff. Now, the Colorado Buffaloes are a program that's in bad shape. They were 1-11 last year and were regarded by many as the worst program amongst the Power Five conferences. So out of all the big schools in college football, they were the worst. And not just last year. In many regards, they're similar to the Detroit Lions of college football. For the past 17 seasons, they've only had one winning record. Now, I know technically they had a winning season two years ago in 2020, but that was during the uh, lockdowns. So they only played six games. And during that time, you had a lot of teams throughout the country that had players that were opting out. So it was an odd year. Most teams are not at their best, and that's how they got that winning season. So you really can't count that. But you get my point. It's a program that's been on hard times for the better part of 20 years. And that's disappointing because that's not their legacy. From the late 80s through the mid 90s, they were a top flight program. In 89, they were one win away from winning a national championship. Then they came back the following year in 1990 and won it. Then like six years later, everything fell apart. So just like Bob Quinn in Detroit, Dion is burdened with the task of changing the culture of the Colorado program. But unlike Bob Quinn in Detroit, he's not inheriting a team with a winning record. Again, the Lions weren't great, but they were a playoff caliber team. They did have a winning record over the span of four years. And Quinn was just given the task of getting them over the hump taking him to the next level. Dion isn't so fortunate. That Colorado Buffaloes roster is horrible. So there's nothing there for him to build on. That's why he told those kids in his first meeting to go ahead and hit that transfer portal because he was bringing his own luggage. 
and it's Louie. In other words, he's bringing in some kids of his own that can play. Kids they probably can't compete with. And in all likelihood, he's right. Again, they were 1 in 11. And look at that room. I don't see any horses. I don't see any dogs in that room. They look like a 1 in 11 football team. And I can't imagine any of the players they had coming in were any good either. Because what dominant player coming out of high school wants to go to a 1 in 11 football team? Not any good ones. Not those good enough to go to schools like Georgia, Alabama, or Ohio State. You know, the programs that Colorado expects Dion to compete with. And that's why I believe he's pulling the scholarships of the players that were recruited by the previous staff. Now, before you get upset, look at the rankings. The highest rated player on that list of kids whose scholarships were taken back is 742. These aren't highly touted athletes. These aren't four and five stars. These aren't the caliber of the kids he recruited to go to Jackson State. Again, Colorado is a team within a Power Five conference. They're supposed to be a cut above lower divisions. But I honestly think Colorado is one of the few teams that Jackson State could have beaten in the Power Five. In other words, they're pathetic. So why would anyone be surprised at him pulling scholarships? How can you expect a man to win? If you're going to burden him with the players of the previous coaching staff, the coaching staff that was fired because they couldn't win. That don't make no sense. And it's not like he's Brian Kelly going to LSU, where he's got 15 to 20 NFL prospects already on the roster, with 5 to 10 more coming in out of high school. It's Colorado. I can't remember the last time they had a player drafted, let alone one in the first round. And as a matter of fact, this happens all the time. Those who are in the know, know. Coaches that come into dysfunctional programs often pull scholarships, and they cut players, because they've got to make room for players they want to recruit, even programs that aren't switching coaches. I remember my high school days and watching kids go off to college and seeing some of them lose their scholarships, primarily because the schools they were planning to go to over-recruited and they were slow to sign, but a lot of times because the coach wanted to go in a different direction and had second thoughts. And in all my years, I've never seen a coach get scrutinized for doing that until Dion came along. Okay, yeah, you got a point. And I also think there's a lot of hating going on. A lot of people are still mad that Dion is leaving Jackson State. Others don't like the idea of an HBCU coach with only three years of experience landing a Power Five conference job. And I also think there's some bitterness on behalf of the players who were rejected. I'm sure many of them grew up dreaming to attend a school like Colorado, and when they heard that Dion was getting a job, they were like, man, I get to be mentored by Coach Prime. I get to be coached by him. I get to meet and interact with him. But when that didn't happen, their hopes were dashed and they became bitter. And so they used the viral video of him telling the existing kids on the Colorado roster to transfer as an opportunity to pile on on the controversy. And because it's Dion. Dion Sanders is more than a coach. He's a football legend, a brand, an icon, an A-list sports celebrity. His face is everywhere. He's magnetic. People like being around him. And anything he does draws attention because Deion Sanders is the ultimate pitch man. He knows how to talk you up and make you feel good. Plus, it's happening in the social media age where everything is over-scrutinized. And not only that, but this is the first time we've ever seen anything like this. A high-profile coach like Deion Sanders going to a low-end program like Colorado? Big coaches like him tend to go to big schools. For example, Lincoln Riley left Oklahoma to go to USC. Brian Kelly left Notre Dame to go to LSU. Nick Saban left the NFL to go to Alabama. None of them, not with their name, branding, and recognition, would have gone to Colorado, not from the programs they were coming from. And again, it's historic. We've never seen an HBCU coach get promoted to a Power Five conference team. So I just think everybody needs to put the whole thing into perspective. I'm sure people feel bad for the kids, but it's either their feelings or his career. Because Colorado expects Dion to win. They want to get back to their glory days of 30 years ago. And if that means rejecting players that aren't good enough to do that, so be it. And again, Colorado is still a Power 5 school, and if those kids were good enough to spark interest from them, I'm sure they have other offers. As you can see here on the list, four of them have already committed to other teams. So everything will be alright, those kids will be fine. Just sit back and let Coach Prime cook.
So if you like this video, please give it a like and leave a comment in the comment section and share the link on your social media platforms. And if you are new to my channel, please subscribe and turn on that notification bell. That way you'll get alerts every time I upload a new content. This is the Layman's Journal. Thanks for stopping by. I'm out.